my first reaction is wow. Uh, first of all, just I want to wish each and one of you a Merry Christmas. We hope you have a wonderful Thanks. 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 I want to particularly recognize Rachel Robinson, who has now done an extraordinary job once again. She helped us get on the ballot in Ohio, and she said we weren't going to be on the ballot. With your help, uh, she's done once again being successful both in Virginia and in the District of Columbia. She really has taken the swamp for the whole country. I assume it's here, but I have no idea what it is. Uh, is Michael Cole. Uh, where, where is Michael? Is he here? I see one dog. Michael Cole, if you get a chance to see him. Back there, wait, 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 wait. Michael Cole. When, when all the consultants left, because of course I was a hopeless candidate, uh, <laughs> Michael is the person who stepped in without missing a beat, took over everything, restructured everything. Uh, got our costs down to the level of a volunteer campaign, and, and we literally would not be here today. So, um, so it's just going to have a very great day. I see a number of friends who are here, and, and what we'd like to do in a minute is work out some kind of photo line for those of you who like. You don't have to, if you don't want to, you don't have to wait for mine. But if you'd like to get a picture tonight, it's sort of part of Christmas. Uh, we'd love to do that. We think that would be terrific. And, uh, and you can take it. Your, your camera has enough to film. Yes, plenty. <laughs> <laughs> and so I have to tell you, I'll start about, about this photo. So two nights ago, we we're, were in Hiawatha, Iowa, which is, you can't get names, but and, and we're going through to, on, on the way up to speak. And I passed a seven-year-old kid uh, named, named Ty Fong, who was Father Christian Fong. He's a very, very smart guy, although I didn't know it was Christian Fong. And so I reach down to shake the seven year old's hand and says to me, Which app do you like better on the iPad? <laughs> <laughs> and I stopped and I said, How old are you? And he said, I'm seven. I have to see. And we got talking about apps. Well, Chris's favorite app was in his Facebook, uh, which he's on approximately 14 hours ago. Uh, well, so he and I chatted for a minute, and I got up and I said to the press corps, who promptly, of course, said, I don't want to talk to him, it was the perfect example of why this campaign is different. This campaign is designed for the age of iPhones and iPads and Blackberries and Androids and Google and you name it. And it's designed to cut out all the intermediate stuff that has made it difficult. And it's designed to allow everything from a tweet at 140 characters to a long form YouTube at an hour to an interactive course online to all the different things you can do in the modern world. And, and we're not good at it yet. We're learning, we're getting better every week. But it's why, you know, we have at least one competitor who's been running for about six years. Has <laughs> <laughs> raised millions of dollars from his close friends. And did a little YouTube on that about being orderly and how it all, you know. <laughs> when you got it all going, you don't have to worry about it. You sit in your kitchen and do it. Well, I want to tell you up front, that ain't us. This is a people's campaign of people coming out from everywhere. It is people who are getting the job done. Once again in Virginia, we're going to disappoint the Republican establishment because tomorrow in Richmond, we're going to turn in vastly more signatures than we need. We're going to do it. about this race as this result. And I have to confess, we're about 45 to 60 days ahead of where I thought we were. So we're, we're playing catch up. And I thought we'd be in one of the top four in Iowa, and we'd probably do pretty well by the time we got to South Carolina. Uh, but, but a couple weeks ago, we became the front runner, which of course when everybody shot at us, we weren't ready for it yet because we don't have the structure and we don't have the money to compete at that level. So we've had to scramble a little bit. We had two phenomenal days in Iowa. This morning, the Speaker of the House in Iowa and the Speaker of the House in New Hampshire jointly endorsed me in Des Moines and Green. Yeah. Yeah. I went through uh, with uh, the Speaker from uh, New Hampshire back to New Hampshire 
By the way, the guy who cut the budget, not didn't slow down the rate of growth. They, they, they adopted a brand new idea that I hope Paul Ryan will look at for budget reform. They had the Ways and Means Committee report the amount of money that would come in. They then designed the budget to fit the amount of money they would have. The families understand the uh, And, and they, they really cut spending substantially in the state uh, because that's what they had to do to meet the, the revenue projections. Whereas the old liberal model was you figure out how much you want to spend, and that tells you how much you have to raise taxes. So we, so we flew back to the bill, and we had, we had a great event uh, in, uh, in Manchester uh, before we came down here. So that's part of why we're a little bit late getting here. We've been bouncing around lots of things. In the two days in Iowa, two things happened. We, Chris and I went to, I think it was five or six events or seven events a day, all of them with great crowds, all of them with very positive people. And the message that, that they were telling me was stay positive. Now, they are drowning. are running massive number of negative ads, followed by negative mailings, reinforced by negative robocalls. And yet people were saying to us, ignore them. Go straight forward. Talk about how you're going to fix America. Talk about how to create jobs. Talk about your plan for a better future. Point people to new.org and everything we've got there is a 21st century contract. And so as we were developing and talking to folks, Two things have evolved in the last 40 hours. The first is I want all of you to know. I have one opponent. It is Barack Obama. We're going to stay positive. Yes. They have negative ads up. We just put up a daring response ad today which was that I wish people Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to keep drawing the contrast between negative and positive over the next two weeks. We're going to be in 44 cities in Iowa starting on Tuesday. Uh, and we're going to crisscross the state talking about the need to be positive. We're also going to say two other things. We're going to challenge our friends to take down the negative ads and follow the Ronald Reagan 11th Commandment. And let's spend the last 10 days in Iowa on positive messages if they don't have something positive they can get elected on, they shouldn't be running. That is our <laughs> well, the, well there is, the, the current campaign finance rules are just make no sense at all. They're totally destructive. They resemble what Congress is trying to legislate. <laughs> uh, and the fact is that they distort the system. They allow people over here to spend unlimited money in, in, a, in a super PAC, while the actual candidate has very limited resources. It's, it's exactly backwards. Nonetheless, if you have a super PAC in your name, you are morally responsible for it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I probably wouldn't have gotten so deeply into this, except yesterday morning, uh, my good friend Governor Romney was on MSNBC, and he explained that he really thought super PACs were terrible. <laughs> his, his super PAC, by the way, the Romney PAC, next week, plans to spend $1,400,000 in Iowa alone on negative ads. And so he was explaining that they're really terrible and that he really wishes that we didn't have them. And they said to him, well, why don't you tell them not to? He said, oh, I can't tell them because that would be against the law. Now, there's an old-fashioned American term for that. <laughs> Not the one you're thinking of. The one my grandmother would have used is baloney. <laughs> I don't know what you were thinking of. <laughs> so, so I said yesterday, the Romney ought to have the courage to stand up, either embrace his pack, which is run by his former staff, paid for by his millionaire donors, and say, yeah, I'm going to be really negative and miserable because I think that's the way to win. Or you ought to say, you know, I really do want to be positive. I want them to not run another negative ad, period, or I'll disown them and encourage people not to give them any money. Now, if you can say that publicly, you're not breaking any law. You know, and they will probably read it if he says it. And they'll probably know what he said. And he came back this morning. I, I found this amazing. We were in Manchester, and one of the reporters, we had a 
the press group for a little bit. One of the reporters said, Governor Romney has suggested that if you can't take the heat, you should get out of the kitchen. <laughs> and she said, you think you have a problem taking the heat? And I stared at her for a minute. <laughs> Those of you who know my career know that there have been occasions where there have been a fair amount of heat. <laughs> Two government shutdowns, 120,000 negative ads. So I said, I'll tell you what. Governor Romney's enamored of Harry Truman's idea of heat and kitchen. I want to give him a new opportunity. So I've challenged Governor Romney to meet me for 90 minutes in Iowa next week, anywhere, anytime. Time and show them for free and he can explain <laughs> And we'll find out tomorrow how he likes the heat and whether he wants to come in the kitchen or whether in fact he is just another normal national politician with clever consultants and a lot of money with no willingness to stand up and tell the truth. So, you, we had a campaign that was about to disappear and you made it possible. We had a situation in Virginia 10 days ago where we might not have gotten on the ballot. And you made it possible. And my last very positive point is a poll happened to come out today showing us winning in Virginia with your help. Yeah. So with your help, we're going to get the ballot. With your help, we're going to carry the delegates to the convention from Virginia. And with your help, we're going to go on to beat Barack Obama, win an elected Republican U.S. Senate, and have a much better future for America. And Chris and I look forward to getting pictures with anybody who would like to get a picture. Thank you all.